Hey, I'm Ken from You Make Terrain, and today we're going to do part two of a series that I'm doing on 15 millimeter hills. Our studio helps people just like you every day learn how to build terrain for their tabletop gaming, for their miniature war gaming, for their RPGs, or maybe the board game that needs a little bit more terrain, so that you can enjoy your games even more than you do. Once you have epic terrain on a tabletop, it just makes the game even more enjoyable and really sets the ambiance the right way. So we help you with techniques, tactics, tools, materials, safety, <laughs> because we all need to be safe while we're doing this, but I try to teach you with the materials and tools that you're already using or can get pretty easily at any local hardware store to you so that you can simply and easily construct the terrain you've always wanted for your tabletop at home or maybe your games, you know, you're maybe you're a game store owner and you're looking for better terrain for your tables. Or maybe you're a tournament organizer and you're just looking for a better way to batch build lots of terrains. These videos will help you and help you be better at it. So um, we're going to go ahead and start this video, but if you enjoy these videos and you like what we're creating, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the bell to get notified when we put up new content. You also have opportunities, if you look in the uh, context below, to catch me on other social medias or maybe even be a patron on Patreon to the studio so that we can do even more for you, the gaming community. See you soon. Okay, today we're going to be making some hills um, for 15 millimeter terrain. Um, once again, I will show you uh, not only how to make the 15 millimeter terrain uh, that's functional and useful for 15 millimeter, but also how you can expand what I'm teaching uh, to actually do 28 millimeter. Also, I play both uh, ranges of games, and therefore I like to make terrain pieces that could be used for one or the other but I'd like to demonstrate to you how to do both. Um, today I'm gonna to be using uh, plastic card. I use a lot of plastic card and I do this to do the basing for the materials that I'm gonna use. I'm also gonna be using some polystyrene foam. Um, this is just uh, foam that you can uh, get that, you know, it's has a thickness to it. I'm gonna be using an uh, X-Acto knife today um, and I'm also going to be using a all-purpose indoor construction adhesive um, that I use for different things. And, and so I'll start back with the, uh, the plastic card, just so we can kind of talk about this. This is a good size uh, square shape for a hill. I think this one is five inches by six inches. I'm just going to measure here. Um, yeah, it's like roughly five by six. Of course, I'm not going to make it square. I'm going to make it a unusual shape. And this piece here, I think is yeah, almost six by 11. I'll probably just cut that one in half. And then this one I've used as a palette for terrain making, as you can see, with brown paint. It's, uh, it's about six and a half inches by 11. And I'll cut that one in half also. Um, also, the plastic card that I'm using I'm just going to flip this around here so you can see it well. It's about three millimeters thick. Um, I find that to be a good thickness for smaller pieces. Uh, if you're using something that's going to be maybe over, uh, say, 14 to 16 inches square, um, you might want half in, you know, like half a centimeter, like five millimeters thick, uh, just because it's going to give you a little bit more durability. But uh, if I do this the right way, I'll end up with five hills that are great for 15 millimeter. At the size, once again, if I was making it for 28 millimeter, I would of course uh, wanna make this probably somewhere in the 10 by 10 range or maybe the 12 by 12 range. Uh, but somewhere between eight and 12 is where I would do it. Probably 10 by 10 would be a perfect size for 28 millimeter uh, hills. Anyway, typically what I do is I, um, of course, don't want the square shape, so I'm just going to make an organic shape on this piece by cutting it. You can score these a couple of times, of course, with your X-Acto, and please, you know, it's a new blade. I always start with a new blade when I start projects like this. It helps tremendously, um, but also just be careful. You don't want to... Uh, 
cut yourself. It is a blade. You have to be careful. So I'm just snapping where I was. Anything that, you know, is still on there, I'm going to score one more time or two more times to just get through it. And um, take these little corners off. All right, and then I'm gonna shape up these edges um, so that they are ready for a hill. Um, what I like to do is just kind of cut at an angle to start to scallop these sides, take off any corners like this one so that it doesn't look like a square or a point. Um, you don't wanna do this the same all the way around. You actually want to do be different sizes and different shapes so that it looks more organic when you're finished um, to the piece of terrain. So uh, I'm just gonna continue to work this edge, take off that point. There we go. And uh, as you can see, I'm cutting away from myself. That's probably the best bet, the easiest answer so that you're not, you know, cutting toward yourself. And like I said, it could be dangerous. Also, what I like to do is once I've gone around this way, I will actually go back the opposite way um, with different cuts so that I get this really uh, beat up kind of edge, but it's smooth. You're also doing this so that um, when you put the miniature on there um, it's not wanting to tip over on the edge of the piece of terrain at three millimeters if it was a really top heavy uh, miniature it might want to topple over so now that I've kind of worked back over the whole thing you can kind of see I have this nice scalloped edge just take off anything that's an overlapping piece like that and I typically go back on the back side and just cut a very small angle. The reason why I do this is A, you can help clean up some of the edges, but B, it also gives you, an, if it's not like stuck to the surface when it's down on the terrain, if you have that little edge, you can pick it up whether you have fingernails or not. Um, just a, a practicality thing to kind of take off this bottom edge. And that looks pretty good. This happens to have a, a sheet of some kind of metallic piece on the back. I, I got these from a local sign shop, just took their scraps, which they were happy that somebody was gonna repurpose their scraps. And uh, I'm gonna use it for terrain and keep it a very long time. That's one of the reasons why you base hills um, like this is because, or any piece of terrain, I base all of my terrain pieces with a piece of plastic card or a piece of durable material, maybe like uh, masonite or some kind of press board underneath. The reason why is the durability of your um, terrain piece for the long run is going to be really high. Um, I was just recently at a shop that I made terrain for uh, years ago, almost seven years ago. And they were super excited that the terrain pieces were still holding up and in great shape. Some of that is just they're very careful to maintain the terrain. But the other pieces that we all we based it on the bottom with this. And what that did is it, it really made the terrain piece durable for the long haul. And if you're building terrain for your local hobby shop or if you're just uh, if you're building terrain for you and your buddies to have a good time with your miniatures, uh, putting this base piece on there is really important. The next thing we're going to do, uh, once you have the shape cut out and you've scalloped the edges and, you know, kind of given that edge so you can pick it up, is you're going to hash mark the surface of this. The reason why we're doing that is it gives a better surface for other materials to be glued to it. So I'm just going to take the point of my blade and kind of cut scratches. They don't have to be very deep, but deep enough to give it a little bit of a texture. 
on the surface. And I'll just go about it a couple of different ways. I'm gonna go back diagonal now. And you're doing this so that, um, like I said, there's a texture that the glue will easier adhere to when you glue the next piece on. Now that could be either sand, but in this case, it's gonna be foam, which what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, foam, I'm gonna put the piece on here that we just cut, just take my knife, some people like to cut with a longer, like utility knife, like a flat blade razor. Uh, that works very well in these situations too. I'm just not trying to put too many tools out there um, so that just about anybody can do this project with the hobby tools you're probably already using for miniatures. So I've cut pretty deep. I'm just gonna break away the pieces I'm not gonna use. All right, and now I have a piece that's roughly the same size and shape as my base. And I'm gonna work with this. Now, of course, if you wanted to make this two layers of hill, you could always take another piece and shape it up on top of that. Um, I'm just gonna make these one layer hills, but I will do one of those pieces with a second layer so you can see what that looks like. Um, another thing to do also is, um, you know, once you have the piece and you know that it fits on there well, is uh, you start to clean up the edges just like we did on the base piece. You're gonna clean up the edges on this hill with your knife. Something to keep in mind is you don't want this kind of steepness to it unless you're trying to make it an impassable piece of terrain or something that they're gonna have to scale. So sometimes you could leave this, put sand here, put the piece here, cut it, and just have a hill or an impassable piece on one side, and of course you can always do this and make tall rocks. Uh, once you glue it down, it'll stay for a long time. Remember that pieces that are real vertical are gonna be easier to be damaged, and pieces that are more stable like this are gonna be less easy to damage in the long run. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll start shaping this edge, and I just start taking the foam off a piece at a time. It does not have to be pretty right now. We're going to smooth it up in a little bit so it is pretty. Um, what you're really trying to do is make this where it's feasible that a, you know, a model or a miniature in your game, be it 15 or 8 or 28 or, you know, 32 at this point, because um, a lot of the games have moved to like a heroic 32. Um, what you're wanting to do is to make this edge all the way around something a miniature in your range can actually do. So you start to kind of smooth up the edges and break off so that there's more of a slope as you go along. And this is where a longer knife will really help you. Like if I had a longer blade, but like I said, I'm trying to do this with the hobby tool you probably already have and are using on a consistent basis. Um, and like, as I said before, when you start a project like this, especially with foam, the sharper the blade, the better off you are. Um, because a dull blade will not do this very well at all. So as you can see, I'm gonna just shape this hill up and start to really cut at a big angle. And um, I'm gonna put it back on there. And so probably what I need to do is just really take off thin layers like that. So that I get more of a slope, at least on one edge. I uh, do that kind of slope on an edge or two, it'll really make it good for my miniatures.
You can also do this with a, uh, a foam cutter. I have used a foam cutter before. Um, it goes a little bit slower than this, but you're making smoother cuts with a foam cutter. Um, but <laughs> um, the reason why I typically don't do a foam cutter is because it gives off a lot of fumes. Um, and I would prefer not to, especially in an enclosed space, uh, breathe in bad fumes. As you can see, I'm taking off thinner and thinner angles as I go along, but I tend not to leave a lot of just square surface up on the top of any hill, just because I think it detracts if your hills aren't sloped all the way across. Um, you could totally make flat spots on the top of your hills though, so that you knew that, hey, that miniature's on the hill and it's in a secure place. So, but because the angle is so shallow, typically a model's not gonna fall over if you make sure that you're being really smooth with your shaping the miniature will stay up there a lot better. And so I'm just trying to make this edge a very shallow slope so that we can get miniatures up there. As you can see, this makes a horrendous mess. And uh, I have a good bit of static electricity going on. You can see it's stuck to my hand and the blade and everything else. And like I said, you don't have to have it really neat at this stage because you're gonna go back and smooth it up in just a minute anyway. So one of the ways you can smooth it up is just by taking the flat of the blade and kind of working back and forth. There's a couple other techniques that I'll show you once I have this shaped up. Um, so this side is a little less impassable than these other sides. But what I like to do, and uh, just move some of my mess away, what I like to do is to put my heel down um, on the piece and, you know, see how it's matching up. Kind of turn it around a couple of times to see. Looks like it's really going to fit best this way. Looks like I need to come off this corner a little bit. And maybe this opposite corner here um, with a little bit more of a slope. All right, and there's your rough hill. Put it back on there. I'm still off a little bit right here on this corner. So I'm actually just gonna shear it off right there. 
And, um, you know, there's a hill on a, on a piece. And this is a pretty good hill. What I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna grab a 15 millimeter model. And um, maybe an infantry stand. So I am, you know, if I was infantry, I could be like this on the hill. This is a little bit of a steep. This one's probably no good. But that's okay. But that way you could be like coming up on the hill. And then of course you got a place for a couple of stands, of course, on the top of the hill. Um, and a couple of different, you know, like if I had two stands of infantry, that would look okay. And they could be coming up. Now, of course, the tank's going to look funnier coming up the side of this thing. Um, but once you get sand on it, it, I mean, it's slipping off a little bit. But once you get sand and, and plaster of Paris up, or spackling up on the top of this thing, which is how we'll finish it, it'll have a lot of texture and it'll help hold models on there better. Um, but once again, you can smooth this up and make this more of an angle. And I'll show you that on one other hill. But this, at least at this point, you have functionally a hill of how it would look. So one of the things you can use is a sanding block to smooth up this hill. I'm just gonna take it and rub it on this edge and you'll kind of see that I can smooth it up pretty well in just a minute with a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. Um, and this is just a foam with sandpaper on it, really. Um, I like these blocks better than paper itself to smooth up. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna finish this really with spackle and sand at the end. But as you can see, it smooths up the edges a lot, takes out any divots that you might have. It's very easy to just kind of straighten out foam. If you have allergen problems, you might not sand a lot like this just because um, you're creating, you know, styrofoam dust, <laughs> which is not the greatest probably. Um, but it's not a lot of dust and it's not getting it into the air as a particulate as much as it's just falling to the side. But if you have trouble with that kind of thing, it might be better to just smooth this up with a knife or just leave it rough and use the spackle and sand to kind of smooth it up the best you can, um, just for safety. But I like to use the sanding block because it gives a nice look to the hill before I do the next step. And I like to do this on the top just because this gives it more of a natural look to the slope. As you can see, that just looks more like a hill. Yeah, there's still a flat spot, but it's all sloped at this point. And just doing the sanding block is what will make it look like that. Now, once again, um, you know, if I was playing with my miniature at this point, even from just a minute ago, you can see where that's gripping to the side of this a lot better already, just because I smoothed it up. Um, and I, I think you can see that like even slopes like that, that are a little steeper, once you start to smooth it up, just gives the base of miniatures. And depending on if it's, you know, heavy or light, it, it's still sticking to that edge a little bit. Um, as you're coming up the hill, you just don't want something that's going to be, like I said, like this, where the miniature can't really get up there. All right, so the next step, once you have smoothed it up with your sanding block and you've cut the hash marks, you've cut out your piece of foam, is I use this all-purpose interior construction adhesive. I tend to like this one just because um, I feel more controlled with it. It has the trigger mechanism. And uh, what I do is I just put... Um, Adhesive down on this. I don't have to put a lot. Maybe just a little bit around the edges um, because you're gonna wiggle this piece down onto it. So you don't have to have tons of the adhesive available um, because what will happen is when you, um, let me get this on there the right way. Kind of line it up again. Yeah, that looks good. I'm just gonna wiggle it down onto the piece 
make sure it's on there pretty good. And see, I'm coming right down to the edge there. I might clean this up just a little bit with a knife. Anything like this where the glue is coming out, I'll just run my finger. This is a water soluble glue, so it's not like it's harmful to me if I get it on my finger. But you could use a, a tool to get that out. Anywhere there's this little fan of, of styrofoam that looks a little funny, I'm, I'm just gonna take that off with a knife. And so I would let this dry for at least a couple of hours. Um, typically I let it dry overnight before I take the next step. And then once I've taken the next step, I will, I will show you guys how to do this uh, sand and spackle to the surface of this so that it becomes a very, very durable piece of terrain for a long, long time. Um, that is the secret beyond this bottom piece uh, you know, giving it good durability is putting the spackle sand mixture on the top so that, um, you know, the durability of the piece long term, once you primer that, is going to be just fantastic. I'm scratching up the bottom of this a little bit. That's just so it has, it won't be super slick. Uh, sometimes I actually really rough it up with sandpaper or something so that it won't be super slick on the table because once you start putting miniatures on it you certainly don't want it to slide around um, but I'm happy with that I know I could get a couple of bases that's a good hill if somebody's below the hill you know if I had line of sight you know they wouldn't see that um, because the ruler doesn't even hit them one inch is perfect for 15 millimeter to you know give the representation of a hill without going too far but like I said you could you know, I could do another piece right on top of this and make this a hill and something really impassable over here on this side uh, just by shaping up this piece and gluing it right to the surface of this one with the same adhesive. Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, we'll take it up with uh, the sand and spackle next.